we've got some fun stuff happening in the good old state of Tejas that I think is worth mm-hmm. talking about. Um, Tesla is segueing from California for their manufacturing to Austin, Austin. I don't know how you say it. Um, <laughs> it for is. a few a few different things. So l- yesterday was a Tesla earnings call, so we've got a lot to cover there. But probably the one of the kind of cooler things out of that discussion was that their next factory is going to be in Austin, Texas. Wait, this article is from May. Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, actually, Electric broke the story in May. Huh. Okay, odd. Okay, well, anyways. I wonder if, it, I wonder if the earlier version of this, the headline said, Tesla could build its next factory, and then they just changed the headline. Uh-uh. I remember this. Okay. I yeah, remember I this. We, we even talked about this on the show. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, what? No way. How do they and know they, that? And they show Boom. a picture of the Nevada Gigafactory that has never been finished. Right, <laughs> and will be like 50 years from now. Yeah. Hey. Um, so, yeah, officially Tesla will be building uh, their next Gigafactory or Terra Factory in, uh, near Austin, just north of Austin. I think the Verge has some... Um, Yeah, here you go. Verge has some actually photos of it that we can check out, which is pretty cool. So they're going to be doing um, the Cybertruck and Model 3 and Model Y for East Coast. So if you're, or Eastern half of the United States. So if you're in the Eastern half of the United States, Tim, I don't know where you live, which of those you follow. Smack in the middle. You're right in the middle, yeah. So um, cornfield. So anyways, <laughs> cornfield, yeah. So that's where that's so Cybertruck will be made there, and three and Y S and X will be continue to be made worldwide in California. Model three and Model Y will be for the west western half of the United States will be made in California still. Um, and this is apparently this is along Colorado River. These are apparently some photos there of a uh, twenty one hundred acre lot. Uh, there's some how is nice, there that much? Cool I don't homes. get how there's that much space right like close. I guess we did. We've all been out by the airport. I guess by Austin, it is actually pretty, fairly empty out by the airport, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird because it seems like it's pretty close to downtown. Yet downtown in Austin is so dense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh? Yeah. I'm just shocked that there's this much land that <clears throat> relatively close to Austin. You know. Texas is big. Well, man. It, it's Texas. So That's true. There's, <laughs> if there's one thing we have, it's land. Yeah. This is not not actually a big plot of land in Texas. <laughs> right. But yeah. uh, so some details about the factory. They are hope to hire up to 5,000 workers with an average salary just north of $47,000, which I don't know. Like, how, how would you rate that in Austin, Joe? I think Austin's a pretty expensive place. Austin is expensive. Yeah. I mean, but the, the suburbs around it are probably more reasonable. Well, yeah. and so now, I guess compared to other big cities, Austin's actually still reasonably affordable. Like, if you compare, you know, to even probably not quite like LA, but you know, if you compare it to like San Francisco and New York and stuff, it's still like half price basically, mm-hmm. but rising yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yep. I think that the deal I would, I would suspect is that you can still find places that are reasonably priced in Austin to live and, and all that. Whereas, uh, you know, the more populated places in New York or California are just, com- you know, they've been overpopulated for 50 years. So mm-hmm. That they just don't exist. So, anyways, okay. So, forty-seven grand or <laughs> más o menos um, entry-level position starting at thirty-five grand. They will invest one billion, um, and uh, and is planning to make a factory between four and five million square feet. Wow. So pretty big. And uh, for any kind of reference point, um, that is uh, just about the size of the Fremont factory. I believe the Fremont factory is maybe five point two or five point three million square feet. Uh, since they've added on, I guess I don't know if do you count the stuff in tents as part of the factory or not, but you know the factory the itself. I know I believe is five million almost exactly. So, wow. uh, Texas is uh, is excited here. I, I didn't hear on the call or see any headlines about. If you remember when Elon got got really upset about. Um, uh, about California stay at home order, you know, mm-hmm. keeping them shut down, that they were going to move the headquarters. I, I haven't heard if that's official or if that was just like a angry tweet that he sent. Um, it's just a threat. But yeah, so typical thing, they're getting, uh, a, a, you know, tons, tens of millions of dollars in tax breaks from Texas to do it. Tulsa also really tried to court them and Elon on the, on the call had some positive statements just saying, you know, possibly in the future. Thank you guys really respect you and what you did, but we're going with Austin right now. And, um, there you have it. So Cybertruck being made in Texas makes a lot of sense to me. 
So remind us, say it again, just the summary. It's Cybertruck, the Semi, and Roadster even? No, like Roadster's going to be made in California okay. at Fremont. Um, three and Y. And yeah, and I forgot about uh, Semi will be made there as well. So yeah, so Semi, Cybertruck, three and Y for the eastern half of the United States. Western half of the United States, three and Y are here uh, or in California. And then China, of course, is making the cars for China. Um, yep. And then there's the Gigafactory in Berlin, which we have other news about too. But before we move on, so, and so then just to confirm, so Fremont would continue to make S, X, three, and Y, and Roadster, Cor- correct? Okay, yeah, but not semi, not Cybertruck. Cool. Yep. Yeah. What I wonder is, do they still have the whole dealership thing here that made me have to jump through a thousand <laughs> hoops in order to buy a Tesla? Yeah. Because obviously Elon's t- been talking to Greg Abbott. Like, wouldn't he be like, yeah. hey, I would love to build cars in your state, but can I sell those cars in your state? No, that I'm seriously yeah. curious if that's changed or not, because um, that was like a real contentious thing for a while there. Any updates? Yep. Texas, he- Texas was very anti-Tesla for, for a long time. Well, I, I actually asked Sean um, O'Kane from The Verge, who had that article, who now lives mm-hmm. in Austin. Um, I, I saw and- the pictures were by Sean O'Kane. I'm like... They must live in Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He moved there maybe six months ago or so. Okay, cool. uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah. So as far as I know, uh, I mean, I, ha- I haven't seen anything about that law changing, but the one where they were going to ban Tesla from servicing their cars in Texas has, has been dismissed. Okay. So apparently you're allowed to service your cars there. But I, I, I do not know. I asked him, you know, a serious question. That was my first thought. Like, are they going to now allow this? That has to be, I would assume, part of the deal. Like, I can't imagine Elon and team being like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, we'll worry about that later. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, or I wonder if it'll be like the whole Southwest Airlines thing. Like, oh, if you want to buy one in Texas, it has to be one that's made here. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know how you could only, <laughs> you had to stop in Dallas on your way across the country mm-hmm. with Southwest. Yeah. Things like that. So, But don't you think it's kind of indicative of how, um, God, I don't want to make this political or anything, but like a certain political side of the side of the political spe- blah. how a certain side of the political spectrum I'm trying to be so diplomatic here uh was so like pushing back against electric cars and electrification and greening of technology and whatnot but but now the tesla is the biggest auto company <laughs> in the world by capital mm-hmm. or market cap now that it's being a proven job creator now that it's a proven economic driver. entity mm-hmm. driver Boy, suddenly they're on board with it, and but but I don't I don't mean that to be so snarky necessarily. I think it's a good thing. I think that um, uh, this is kind of the sign of the times that that environmental type stuff is being seen more as uh, a possible job creator and, and uh, economy booster, um, and that might just spiral upwards. I guess. One hundred percent. If you look at solar, one hundred percent. If you, well, I think what you're what you're getting at is the root of, I don't know, maybe this country, which is capitalism, and you know, whatever side of the political aisle you're on, when there's money to be made and you know, uh, mm-hmm. the pursuit of happiness to be had, people are going to go for it regardless of what it is. Uh, the good news here is that Tesla's uh, a company that is providing those things that has a broader purpose, which is benefits us all. So I think that's really the the positive message there. Um, and that's always, I mean, this is the, the nature of my channel was always, you know, a lot of times talking to people about that saying, look, I don't care what you think politically or any of this other stuff. When this car is just the best damn car on the planet yeah. <laughs> and it's faster and it's more fun and it saves you money, all of a sudden, all the other dumb little <laughs> reasons why people didn't like this go away, mm-hmm. you know? When all of a sudden it's just a, a better product objectively, because and and I've I've said that forever. I think it's really hard to argue or convince people of things on some kind of ethical grounds. Uh, we're all super self interested, and unless what you're telling me is going to benefit me benefit me directly over something else, it's going to be a really hard sell. So. If you can mm-hmm. make something that's economically better mm-hmm. or better in whatever way is important to me, then I'm on board, regardless of whatever you know uh, perception is out there. That, yeah. That's what I've observed. Well, I'm I'm hoping this is indicative of a tipping point, where you know greener stuff now has uh, such a strong economic case behind it that 
that things are just going to, you know, trend. Well, and just being normalized even, you know, like at at some degree it has to just kind of be not the outlier and the weird, you know, subsect of sub subculture. It's like becoming mainstream enough and commonplace enough and well accepted enough, again, economically driving that it just kind of slips into normalcy, which is great, which I think is exactly what it needs. Yeah. Yeah. This is the whole thing with with the solar industry and like the solar tax credit and stuff is if you look at, say, coal or even oil and gas and then you look at solar, solar is generating uh, tons and tons of jobs. A big percentage of jobs in the energy space are related to solar energy installers and, you know, manufacturers and all that stuff. So I think once you have that economic engine behind something like that, it is when it really starts to to make progress kind of is so become more socially acceptable and not just be some kind of like like for example an electric tankless water heater when i looked at it did not make sense at all the like i would have to add like eight solar panels on my house just to power this one dumb device because it's so incredibly inefficient now that was nine years ago, so maybe now it's not the case. But when you look at those things, you look at it and you go, "Who the hell would actually do this, right?" But as things progress, I'm sure we'll get to the point where we're like, "Oh no, this is totally the better thing to do. I'm just going to do it." And the political conversation never even entered my head. It was just that that was the best yeah. thing, best option. So I think people that are are advocating for sustainable technologies, like that's to me always is you have to prove that first. It just has to be better first. You know, the mm-hmm. fact that it's green or whatever has to be a secondary thing because that's not a winning argument for, I find, for most people. So, Well, yeah. I think even like hydrogen production still lives in that world where it's like, you know, you can do yep. steam reforming because it's 10 times less energy as, as far as an actual process, you know. But, uh, you know, regardless of the fact that you can literally do it for free, you can literally produce hydrogen for free using electrolysis, but it's just less efficient, takes more time, takes yep. more like initial investment and resources, like... It still doesn't quite equate on that scale, even though it can literally be free once the infrastructure is set up. But right, green yeah. hydrogen is still incredibly expensive. It's it's five to seven x the cost of the incredibly polluting hydrogen, the current form <laughs> of it, and so you, that's why the whole uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicle thing is just a non-starter. Honestly, for me, it's just such a mm-hmm. dumb a dumb idea. Honestly, until when you can prove, yeah, yeah, at least especially in, as far as CO two offset, yeah. Yeah, well, and then and then the the electrolysis side of it, you still have the challenge, depending on where you are, of getting water, because mm. water is mm. is non is it is and isn't a renewable resource, right? Like it rains every year, but it doesn't rain the same amount in equal parts everywhere. So it's in some areas, water is like a really tense struggle thing to get a hold of like actually out here where i live in the southwest in texas i'm sure it's probably similar but but you you know it's just it's a different thing but then like in maine they don't give a crap about water because they have it everywhere right so it's it's a weird thing so if you want to make green hydrogen you need to have gobs and gobs of water and until very recently i don't think there was anyone that had ever done it from ocean water um except for some lab in stanford or something so even then you know, but then the problem with it, if you want to use ocean water, is you have to be on a coast. So if you have, say, a long haul trucking, mm-hmm. middle of the country, there's not an ocean nearby to get, you know, un, unlimited amounts of water from. So there's so many problems with hydrogen. I just don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe in 50 <laughs> years it'll be a thing. But hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you, and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com/yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.